My work is a sculptural practice that's kind of driven by narrative and writing. I think I was kind of that classic art student who was a bit creative but wasn't a painter or a drawer and so was a bit then lost in that space. Whereas going to university really gave me the skills to kind of establish a sculptural practice. And that comes in different waves, like I think often my work can be more of an installation. It's more of a combination of things than one piece individually on its own. So for example, I did a module at university called Art and Writing, and that is something that I've continued within my practice. So art, which would be the sculpture for me, and a writing practice sit in parallel and kind of feed into one another. So usually I'll start with some thoughts, feelings, things like observations, but in a written form, and they will be the thing that then creates the sketches, that creates the sculpture. So that has definitely been a transition that's been directly impacted by studying. But then it's just having the resources available to you. Like I do think a lot of the stuff I do, I am able to work in metal because I have access to a metal workshop. But that doesn't mean I can do make giant like welded things all the time because it's not practical. The writing and the sculpture, there isn't always one that comes first. Usually it's some sort of written form, but that isn't necessarily some great long narrative. Sometimes that is a word, a sentence, a thought, something that I've observed. Maybe it's even come out of like a photographic form. It isn't always like a big thing, but it's just something that I think is really important. And then as the practice develops, so does the sculptures. So for example, on my computer, I have a massive long word document that I will continue to add to when I find interesting ideas, interesting bits of text. And it's not always my own text either. Sometimes it's taken from other people. And that is my first point of call when I'm like, right, I want to make a new sculpture. I think I try to take quite a gentle approach to my sculptures. I try to make sure that the process I'm working with is connected to what you then see. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about acts of transfer, and that's something I've been thinking about in my writing, but it's also something that then has come across in the practice. So working with casting, for example, I will cast with metal, often with pewter. Um, and in the past, I might have worked with sand and clay to create those moulds, but recently I've been trying to think, okay, well, how can I savour that mould as a piece that's just as important as then the taken metal cast, and how can I put those together? So I've been working with wood um, to make moulds and kind of focusing on giving that side of things a bit of attention to. Jessie Darling is a really influential artist. I think the way that they work with narrative to feed into their sculptural practice is really interesting. I think often their work can be slightly more figurative than mine, but they're a massive influence. They also write alongside their practice, and I think is something that a lot of artists do, but it becomes almost a hidden part of their practice. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes to navigate that world of how does text sit with sculptural or installation-based art practice? Is it just a formal text on an exhibition wall or is it something different? So I really like the way that they approach that and the way that they've kind of navigated that in their work as well. Katrina Palmer is someone whose practice is also very heavily um, text-based um, and sometimes that's also a confusing space. I first discovered them through their writing and through a book which is a series of short um, fictions, I guess, called Fabricator's Tale, but most recently went to an exhibition of theirs where it was a full immersive installation and these you basically saw through tiny cracks in a wall, so you, all you were seeing was a slit through to an installation in another space. So this was really interesting to me because it was almost like adding that layer of how do you see what I'm discovering, how do you navigate this space that I'm writing about, that I'm thinking about. There's the Wind Outside is an exhibition that I'm doing at a new space in Bristol called Perennial Gallery. It's a space that two artists are setting up as a very much DIY exhibition space. The show itself has a body of writing that goes with it titled There's the Wind Outside and all the sculptural pieces in the show are wall-based sculptures in metal, steel, aluminium, pewter and wood. The sculptures are all referenced somehow within the text, but they can be read together or separately. There isn't kind of a prescription for how that works. I was trying to think about how do we see the wind? It was as simple as that. I was thinking, actually, the way in which we see this thing is always through an act of transfer it takes from something else. It's always reliant on a different object. So what I wanted to do was investigate that space. I wanted to pay attention to these kind of light and subtle moments. And actually, I kind of approached the wind very softly. I didn't really dive into those kind of 
the harsher landscapes that the wind can create. But for me, this exhibition was just exploring that space. It was exploring this individual thing and then the different stories that came out of that. I was surrounded by kind of theatre and art growing up but I didn't know where my place in art kind of existed. It was kind of like, well, I'm not a painter. I, I don't want to be an architect. I don't want to be a filmmaker. It was kind of this muggy zone. And I think maybe that's the attention to like, it's hard to be an artist, especially like someone that's just making contemporary art for a gallery space. Like it isn't a clear like directional career role or anything like that, but it's definitely something that I've now found my place in. And it definitely took me up until very recently to feel confident and comfortable saying that because I do also work into fields of more practical art and creative applications.